guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'll be reading a true ghost story from Reddit No Sleep. Now this story really freaked me out, um, you know, just darkness in general is just very creepy. So let's get started. This is called Parents Left Me Alone for the First Time Without a Babysitter. I really freaked myself out. By love, don't stay up too late. My mother called over her shoulder and blew a quick kiss in my direction before heading downstairs and banging the front door closed behind her. I heard the car doors open and close as she and my father set off on the, their first date night. On their first date night in over a year. It was also the first time they trust me alone in the house. I was excited, sure. I was going to bend the rules a little bit bed. But I would definitely be in bed by the time they got home. This was a privilege I was determined to hang on to. Now it had finally been granted. I headed downstairs to the living room and fired up Netflix on the big TV. No crappy laptop screen for me tonight. While pondering what to watch, I rummaged <clears throat> through the fridge and cupboards in the kitchen. I needed some snacks to sustain me during the massive binge-watching uh, session I had planned. Armed with some ice cream and popcorn, I settled down on the couch, just remembering in time to set an alarm on my phone so that I would have time to clear away the evidence and get to bed before my parents returned. I was in the mood for something scary. Isn't that always the first thing on any kid's mind when they're left unsupervised at sleepovers? and like horror movies, ghost stories uh, told with a torch under the chin and a dramatic spooky voice. My friends had always begged me to read them scary stories to tell in the dark because apparently I had just the right tone to scare them all crapless. I scrolled down the Netflix home screen to the horror section. Ghosts, slashers, vampires, the cursor, Scrolled further and further left until I finally settled on a cool looking monster movie. In the thumbnail, a blonde girl with dirt and blood smeared on her pretty face was being dragged away from the camera. Her mouth opened in terror and panic. There was no title and the description was just a bunch of random symbols. First uh, figuring it was just a Netflix glitch, I hit play. Thumbnail girl was really cute. The movie began and I curled up under the blanket with my snacks. Yeah, don't <laughs> open a movie when it's just a bunch of symbols and no title. Just my opinion. Anyway, for such a cheesy thumbnail, the movie was deceptively scary. Instead of relying on cheap jump scares, like all the other horror movies, it gave off this atmosphere of, I don't know, malice almost. The soundtrack was conspicuous by its absence. The soundscape, I don't know, I'm not a film buff. On the other hand, it was pretty brutal. The girl from the thumbnail, along with her equally beautiful friends, were being stalked and picked off one by one by this unseen monster. The creature itself never appeared, but its shadow, a shifting black mass, would always be visible a few seconds before another girl was attacked and never seen again. The girls panicked, breathing the pops and squished and screams as the whatever it was picked them off one by one. Sounded as though they were happening just out of my field of vision. As though if I were to turn my head, I would see the latest victim being devoured. All these sounds really seemed to highlight the fact that the monster itself made no noise at all. The only indication it was ever nearby was that freaking shadow. As the movie continued, my imagination began running wild, and I began to pull the blanket up over my head during the tenser moments. My heart was in my mouth, and every few minutes, 
I was obsessively checking to see how long the movie had left. I wasn't enjoying it by this point, but the only thing worse than finishing the movie would be not finishing it and having to go to sleep in my empty house wondering what happened. I think I would rather wonder what happened. The movie reached its climax despite the overwhelming tension as the shadow crept up <clears throat> on the final girl remaining, who, despite watching all her friends die, was facing the wrong way distracted. I began to breathe easier, knowing that, the, that in the next couple of minutes the big reveal would happen. I'd see the monster's face and could put my overactive imagination at ease. But then the screen cut to black. A piercing scream rang out through the speakers. Why had I been so desperate to use the surround sound? And the Netflix home screen reappeared. There weren't any credits. I yelped out loud as my phone rang out, vibrating itself off, off the arm of the couch and onto the floor. For a second, I hesitated to reach down and grab it in case something grabbed me from the gap under the couch. But I mentally shook myself and reached down for it. It was my father on the other end. Sorry, honey, we've been held up. Some lorries overturned on the motorway and all the roads are backed up for miles. We won't be home for another couple of hours yet. Just didn't want you to worry in case you woke up in the middle of the night and we weren't back. Go to bed soonish, yeah? We love you. I told my parents I loved them too, then hung up. I did want to go to bed, but during the course of the movie, the sun had gone down and the house was now pitch black. I'd never seen a fan, been a fan of the dark. But after what? But after watching a load of teenage girls, not much older than I, was slowly getting devoured by a creeping shadow over the last 90 minutes, I was especially on edge right now. From a spot on the sofa, I had the open door to the hallway warily. The hall light switches were on the opposite wall, and they were by the stairs. Taking a deep breath, before I could talk myself out of it, I raced across out of the living room, skidded into the hallway, and slammed my palm against the pair of switches. Instantly, the upper and lower floors of the hallway were illuminated. There was a distinct lack, lack of monster-shaped shadows, and I let out my breath in one long sigh. I ventured towards the front of the door and checked that my mother had locked it. She had. Boyd, I don't know how to say this word, buoyed by the fact that I hadn't been eaten, <clears throat> sorry, between the sofa and the hallway, I decided to quickly clear up the remains of my late night feast, brush my teeth, and then get straight into bed. Once I got to the kitchen, however, the creeping unease came right back. I hadn't shut the blinds before it got dark, and now the darkness seems to be like a physical presence against the windows. Would it be the worst to keep the kitchen light off or throw it on and risk revealing something watching me? Its face pressed oh its face pressed against the window. I inched towards the windows, following the perimeter of the room with my back against the wall, reaching out <clears throat> my free arm that wasn't full of rubbish, I untangled the blind cord, fumbling in my nervousness. Come on, come on, I begged. Come on, come on, I begged, squeezing my eyes shut so if someone or something was watching me, I wouldn't have to see it. I heard the blondes finally fall and once again I let out my remaining breath. I had been holding it for so long. It felt like there had been a balloon on the verge of bursting in my chest. I dropped the rubbish in the bin and left the kitchen as quickly as possible. Before I made another room, though, I screamed in terror as I felt something scrape lightly against my hip. I then felt incredibly foolish as I realized it was my phone vibrating, telling me to go to bed. Messaging, oh, massaging my chest as my heart slowly returned to its normal rhythm, 
I headed back to the living room to the light. I folded the blanket, plumped up the cushions, and made sure the room looked how I'd left it. My parents weren't neat freaks or anything, but I didn't want to take um, the first night they trusted me alone in the house. I went back into the hallway and reached back into the living room with one hand to turn the light switch off. Quickly I grabbed the door and swung it shut. The rational part of my mind knew that of course there was nothing in there, but the lizard part of my brain that thrived on adrenaline was still hyped up from that freaking movie. I went up the stairs and into the bathroom, even though I needed to brush my teeth, as I did, so I couldn't bring myself to look in the mirror in case something was behind me. I couldn't bear to know. The hairs on the back of my neck pricked, prickled, even though I had my back pressed against the wall and my eyes squeezed shut so I wouldn't accidentally look at the big round mirror over the sink. My eyes still clamped shut, I spat out the toothpaste and fumbled my way over to the toilet. <clears throat> I opened my eyes and looked around briefly, considering sleeping in the bath with the light on and the door locked. Then I shook my head decisively. I was being stupid. I shouldn't have watched that movie. Certainly not when I was home alone for the first time ever. I had only myself to blame, and I needed to snap out of this wreck of nerves I had become over the last couple of hours. I strode out of the bathroom, hoping if my body, my body language was confident that my mind would follow. As a compromise to myself, I decided to leave the hall light on, so I wouldn't be in total darkness if I couldn't get to sleep. Taking a deep breath, I opened my bedroom door. All in the same movement, I swung it shut behind me. I launched myself across the room and dived under the covers, not letting my ankles anywhere near the gap between the bed and the floor. I crawled up under my blankets and heard the door snap shut. It's funny how when you're under your blankets, you know in your heart that nothing can touch you. After a few minutes, the heat under the duvet was stifling. I had cocooned my entire body, head and all, and the air was growing stale and clammy. I, spoke, I poked my head out to grab a few gasps of cool air. Sighing with relief, I rolled over to face the door. I could see the light underneath it and the shadow that was slowly growing, shifting, twisting, and illuminating portion of the carpet. So what did you guys think of that? And I don't know, that was pretty creepy because me and the dark, you can see and hear things that aren't there. Your mind will play tricks on you and everything, but let me know what you guys think and like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.